안녕하십니까. 2020 새활용 페스티벌에 관심 가져주신 여러분께 감사드립니다. 이번에는 국내외 새활용 전문가로부터 새활용 실천 스토리를 들어보려고 합니다. 오늘 이야기를 들려주실 분은 바수라마입니다. 바수라마는 스페인 마드리드에서 시작되어 전 세계적으로 영향을 주고 있는 아트그룹입니다. 작년에 새활용 페스티벌에 방문해 주시기도 했었는데요. 올해는 코로나 상황으로 인하여 온라인 인터뷰로 진행합니다. 그럼 바수라마 대표 모니카를 만나보겠습니다. Hello, Monica. Hi, good morning. Hi, thank you for joining us. It's a pleasure. <laughs> you know, in a view, I learned that the Basurama of today is strictly inspired by your experience in college, where you got stretched to replace expensive material. The use of material from the garbage for creating art is incredible and inspirational. Would you please take us deeper into the beginnings of Basurama? Basurama was born uh, for the need of learning in a different way. Learning by practice, learning with your hands, by trial and error, and above all, to have fun. When we started, trash was something easy to get and cheap, but it was also an incredible source of creativity. Whenever you have to work with what is available, it's easier to push the limits of imagination. And when there are a lot of minds working together in a specific possibilities with some materials, you realize that how different approaches uh, could be with the same material and how much you can learn from each of them. Mm -hmm. You can work with the shape. You can work with the material in shape. You can work with the properties. You can cut it. You can assemble, etc. So Basurama just started as a festival to experiment with that trash and to discover the potential of those materials that were neglected by others, but that were a treasure for us. We always say that trash has gave us everything because have helped us to think about society itself, about our relation with the environment, about our identity. Trash for us is infinite. Basurama nowadays is dedicated to cultural and environmental research, creation and production, and has focused its area of study and action on production processes, the generation of ways that this imply and the creativity possibilities that these contemporary conjunctions arise. We use garbage in his broader sense as a starting point to build new possibilities. Networking, active participation, value of local resources and creativity are the key elements to develop projects for social transformation. Mm, thank you. In order to expand the practice of upcycling, Seoul Upcycling Plaza puts a lot of efforts on expanding waste into the concept of play. Last year, you visited SUP. Would you please share your experience during your visit at SUP? What was your first impression of Upcycling Plaza? That's one of the best things about Seoul Upcycling Plaza, that is in, incorporate the playful part of trash. Mm -hmm. We have to stop communicating about how bad is everything and start working to see how we could improve things. And that's what you do. Working with the leftovers help us imagine unimaginably futures. I like to say, as Ursula Kalegin uh, already learned, that we have to imagine better and not worse futures. Re to rethink utopias, because perhaps in that exercise of imagination, we will find some answers of how to imagine a different future, our own, not ruled by the laws of market and wild capitalism that assimilates everything for its perpetuation and maintenance. We have been last year at Seoul Upcycling Plaza, and first of all, we would like to profit this opportunity to thank again to Global Ace and to Play Ad for the invitation last year. But for us, it was great to see that the Korean government is so committed with circular economy and upcycling itself and dedicate even a building to it. We consider that the environmental education and awareness work that you are doing is exceptional. And we love the approach based on use over recycling. The specific point is un that a specific point is uncommon in, in European countries, at least in Spain, where recycling is generally encouraged over reduction, repair and reuse. And I also discovered, and that's like a nice thing I want to share also, that it was open in my birthday. Based on last year's visit to SUP, how do you see the comparison 
of upcycling culture between Spain and Korea? Upcycling in Spain is mainly done on private base, mm -hmm. like really focusing, I will say, or at least the most uh, known one is a fashion, no? both using clothes themselves and also producing new kind of textiles coming from plastic or other waste materials. Mm -hmm. That makes sense because uh, one of the main problems that we have identified for upcycling is that there is no protocol to get materials to reduce them. So most of the time, the investment in getting the materials themselves is so hard due to the bureaucracy and all that kind of stuff that any attempt, it gets difficult to upscale. So even though I am not uh, really aware of the whole uh, Korean situation in Spain is true that we don't have like an strategic strategic measures at national level. Is there is, is now now in 2020 that our government is developing with public participation uh, the Spanish strategy for circular economy. And as far as I know, the proposal, for example, foresees a 30% reduction of the of the national consumption of raw materials and also. Uh, foresees a reduction in 50% of waste regeneration. So these kind of objectives, if we have to accomplish them in 10 years, are impossible to reach, to reach if you do not take into account measures that reduce trash production right. and increase reuse. Right. For us, the main important thing about Seoul Upcycling Plaza is that allows uh, citizens to empower themselves and also push the laws toward a more respectful use of resources. Because mm -hmm. the truth is that individual behavior and contributions are important, but are states the ones with the power to change the law? For example, the law to avoid uh, use of single-use disposables or a law to encourage deposits refound and return systems and other kind of things like that. Yeah, right. Asrama creates art that is unique and not common to people. It enlightens culturally shock people. <laughs> what is your inspiration to create and continue to create these works of art? I don't completely agree with that. I think that Basurama make art that is easily understood by people and in mo most of the cases is made with and for the people. No, we use art as a tool and we believe that art has the power to transform society because it makes questions in a more comprehensive way and in a more emotional and less evident way. We do not give answers because each of us must discover their own answers. That is why make a critic that's why make critical thinking and allow societies to move forward, or at least that's why we that we, we believe. Our aim propose a, is an inspiration is to transform and to create new imaginaries to support community building processes. We want to make visible the invisible, to show the trash, because we are the ones producing that, that trash. And most of the time, we are not even aware of the trash we produce. So for Basurama, we advocate a, in caring as opposed to consumption. Taking care of things is, is essential for us. And this is the key element of most of our projects. The way in which we believe that the transformation of our point of view is made possible. To change a segment for garbage, even a object, a place, a person or whatever, change that point of view of, view of garbage to a useful, relational and valuable thing. Obviously, the first thing is to reduce our consume and it's without a doubt our goal to consume less. But our projects uh, try to fight against the general obsolescence of everything, against the use and disposal, against the urgency. We bet on repairing, on caring, on reusing, and overall on loving. The resignification of waste for us is the key for transformation and learning. Right. Asrama activity seems to inspire and make people act. What is your most memorable and meaningful work? And why do you think so? You know that it's always very difficult to decide or highlight a, a yeah. project because you 
love all of them be, because one reason or another, no? But I think uh, one of the projects that has been really successful uh, in the inspirational way in making community and in making people act and act forward, no? Their, their own environment is a project that we call um, Agostamiento or also it, it is like commonly called 7,000 some flowers and it is a project born from our drifts around the outskirts of, of Madrid from take, uh, talking to neighborhoods and visiting the remains of the real estate bubble that left whole neighborhoods half built in, mm -hmm. in, in all, all over Spain. We mm -hmm. proposed to the neighbors to turn one of those abandoned and unproductive spaces in mm -hmm. a field of sunflowers. So, so we start blowing, sowing, watering, and collecting and drying the pipes to each them all together. In that way, we generate a community and we recover public space for citizens, for citizens and for the city. Unfortunately, this year we are all affected by the global pandemic COVID-19. In South Korea, a lot of people are using delivery services in order to social distance and avoid direct contact people with each other. This service is increasing disposable product uses, which further harms the environment. Would you please explain the current situation in Spain? It's more or less the same. Mm -hmm. We sadly feel that here we are taking a step back. I mm -hmm. mean, with the single use and the disposals, I think worldwide we are, we are taking a step back. For example, in Spain last mm -hmm. year, uh, there have been uh, some laws appro approved to ban like single use and now everything and every proposal have been completely paralyzed. No doubt, no doubt that uh, we are on a global crisis and due to the pandemic and the right of health is a priority. So health now is a priority, of course, but I honestly believe that there is essential to bring back to the front page of the news, the awareness of the climate and environmental emergency, because global events are correlated and solutions are not coming from a single perspective. There is no future without the collaboration of several actors, scientific, public, citizens, artists, NGOs, media, etc. There is no planet B, and that was the main chorus of the International Students' Mobilization for Actions on Climate Change last year. And I think it's still valid, and I think it's still urgent. Right. Due to COVID-19, the world is required to adapt to the difficult situation. SUP has adapted to the pandemic by shifting most programs to the contentless media. How has the pandemic affected the activities of Basrama? Please tell us about the project that Pasrama has conducted this year. Of course, it has affected all us. I mean, emotionally, I believe we are not all, not ready to evaluate the consequences, but mm -hmm. in a social and economic uh, terms, all of our international projects, for example, have been canceled or postponed. Mm -hmm. And all our community and cooperative uh, projects are on standby. And it's now when we are starting to make some kind of semi-presential workshop, workshops, like some part online and some part uh, like face-to-face, -face, no? Mm -hmm. In any case, during the lockdown in Basurama, we have not prioritized like production, but taking care of ourselves and of our loved ones, because we believe at that point that that was the most important thing to do, no? And this year we basically designed a couple of art projects for the Spanish culture of min ministry. We work in some open calls for site specific installation. And we have also been part of an online collaborative uh, project with uh, other artists around the world that has been curated by Creative Alliance in Baltimore in the States. Mm -hmm. And this project is uh, called Creative Contagion. So each artist is like contagion with creativity, the other one for making a global art piece. And we have also been working with a lawyer in our more like politically involved side, uh, side because we, mo we wanted to make proposals to change the law regarding the design and constructions of mm -hmm. new nursery schools. 
because we realize uh, that there is not even a definition of a school courtyard here mm -hmm. in, in Spain, which implies that there is not budget allocated for it. And therefore, uh, all the schoolyards became just a concrete pavement. And it's mm -hmm. great. Oh, we are looking forward to the time when COVID-19 is under control. When the time comes, what is the first thing you want to do? Do you have any plans in terms of upcycling and environmental protection? To be honest, the first thing I want to do is give, give hacks. I mean, hacks to my family, hacks to my friends. I mean, that's what I miss the most. <laughs> but I mean, in, in terms of, of work and, and of upcycling, of course, in Basurama, we will keep on working on upcycling because all of our projects are a focus on that but at the moment we are working in a couple of projects that we have been developing for some years now uh, one of them is called relapse and the other one is called autocoles and are kind of uh, connected between them a uh, relapse which means laboratory of re living waste is based on three pillars garbage culture and citizenship and the aim is to identify materials that have not end their useful life and reuse them favoring not only a more circular economy but to be uh, to, ha to have cities aligned with the sustainable development goals and climate emergency so these materials were reused uh, through public open calls to co-design and collectively construct playgrounds in municipal schools and in autocolis, we merge like three interrelated, uh, interrelated aspects. One of it is the education through practice. Another one is creative reuse of materials. And the third one is art as a working tool for social transformation and um, spatial transformation also. We believe, as I already mentioned, that playing is a child right and is recognized uh, by the Convention of the Rights of the, of the Children. And, and playing is a learning tool that inspires us and we integrate it in every, in every project because we believe that it's essential. No? Our objective is to build playgrounds from leftover materials, either from the school itself or local institutions or from municipality trust, and do it together with the school community in a shared learning process. It has a clear impact on environmental education, material reuse, and, transfor and transforming our place spaces and playgrounds to our own needs. Autocolis generates practical example and make you believe that a better future could be reached if we imagine it all together. Good. Can you tell us about the Pastrama's future plans and goals? The truth is that uh, with the current situation, with the pandemic, uh, there is an increasingly of, of uncertainty. Mm -hmm. And that are unexpected changes that are coming constantly and make future plans a bit difficult and sometimes rather frustrating. But mm -hmm. we have decided to prioritize some of our working lines that do not require as, as much interaction face to face with others. And in which it is, and in the cases that it's necessary to be with other people, we have, we are trying to adapt the process to the healthy measures and all the, and all the law, all the things that the law say. But on one hand, that this means that we are more working with playground design, and we are doing now a couple of design for public spaces in Spain. Mm -hmm. And on the other, uh, we are working on site-specific art intervention, reflecting a, a, about consumption. And we are also keep trying to work with community-based projects, even though, as, as I mentioned, it's super challenging not, do it, not doing it face-to-face. -face, but mm -hmm. we are trying to do like the co-design and co-creation process online and adapt the construction part uh, with the healthy measures. I mean, to sum up, uh, up a little bit, we will continue working uh, so the right to play and the right of public space is guaranteeing the city design. Mm -hmm. Promoting the construction of exceptional public furniture from waste materials um, is extraordinary, unique, and desired playgrounds and gathering spaces is our goal, is our goal. And we will keep on working to achieve that. Okay. We are coming near to the closing of our interview. 
Would you take a moment and share a message with our, with our audience who support of Cycling Plaza? I think, personally, I believe uh, each city should, go, should have an upcycling center. Moreover, mm -hmm. it will be awesome if every city could have a network of upcycling centers mm -hmm. that coordinate the reception of materials that could be used and reuse as an individual level, but also at enterprise level, construction level, industry. We encourage Seoul Upcycling Plaza to keep on with the work and creating a more informed citizenship and promote in eco design and pushing forward production systems that prioritize reuse over the use of new materials. Thank you for participating in today's interview especially during this difficult time. Not only myself, but people watching this will support Basrama's activity with the same support given to Upcycling Plaza. When this period stabilizes, we will put even more effort into the upcycling practice. That way we can meet and share our knowledge and experience with the international friends like Basrama. Thank you so much. Thanks to you. It has been a pleasure. Thank you very much for the invitation. Mm.